In the New Testament, the first three books are really similar. At face value, it's probably the most famous case of plagiarism out here. But is that just pop fiction? You may be thinking, this is boring, they're all dodgy. But if you take a closer look, beyond what just looks like blatant cut and copy and paste, you'll discover there's a lot more to it than that. In the Jewish Bible, there's a whole bunch of what looks like just the copy and paste too. Kings, Samuel and Chronicles show lots of repetition. There are actually four versions about the first Jewish temple being destroyed. In Kings, Isaiah and Chronicles and Jeremiah. Now when you come to the Gospels and the ancient Greeks and Romans, you need to understand something. Like Socrates, Jesus taught without his own best-selling book. Now people ask, how did anyone remember what Socrates and Jesus taught? Well, travelling educators commonly repeated their teachings. In fact, ancient societies often preferred oral traditions. A historian Papias explains this. He says, spoken narratives better captured the spirit of heart. So students would repeat and memorise large chunks of teaching. That's what Plato did, and that's what the first century gospel writers did. Matthew, Mark, Luke and John. Now, there are a whole list of other Gospels out there besides these ones. Thomas, Judas, Mary and others. But these refer to Gnosticism, the Diatessaron, other documents in the 2nd and 3rd centuries. So what is the synoptic problem anyway? In Greek, this is synoptikos. It means seen with the same eye or seen together. You get the same concept in a meteorology synoptic chart and in binocular vision with stereopsis. The Gospel is basically just good news. In the Roman Empire, Gospel referred to a good announcement about the Emperor and his deeds. Actually, it never initially meant a book. It was an oral announcement. So I'll check out where all this is from. Here's a map of the Mediterranean. These are some of the current countries. Turkey, Greece, Italy, Israel, etc. Now, winding back the clock to the first century. There are four early church fathers who wrote about the traditions of how the Gospels developed. Clement, Papias, Irenaeus and Eusebius. And this is where they mainly lived. Now they say there was an amalgamation of oral traditions in Palestine among the eyewitnesses of Jesus. Then, among the community of Jesus' followers, Matthew wrote a Hebrew or Aramaic text and possibly a Koine or Common Greek translation. Whether his native Hebrew Aramaic version was scribed first is a bit debatable because sometimes he quotes the Old Testament and his Greek version mostly cited the Greek Old Testament, the Septuagint, rather than the Hebrew Masoretic text. And after this, persecutions in 42 AD dispersed the apostles from Palestine. The apostles presumably then took Matthew's gospel with them and the news spread. 20 years later, another Roman persecution broke out and the apostle leader, Peter, was about to be executed in Rome. So tradition says a second writing phase developed, with Mark basically writing down a gospel from Peter's preaching. His book was in Greek and some of the words are Latin. A Greek physician, Luke, then wrote another book, more comprehensive. He researched many sources, and they may have been written on his travels throughout the Mediterranean alongside the Apostle Paul. Then a decade or two later, the Apostle John wrote an account in common Koine Greek which referenced a little bit of the Synoptic Gospels, perhaps 10%. He may have been in Ephesus when he wrote it. Although the Gospels are quite similar, they're also diverse in grammar, emphasis, chronology, perspective, purpose and their audience. But there is still a whole bunch of overlap in Matthew, Mark and Luke. So let's identify what it looks like. Here's a diagram which goes through roughly how many verses overlap in each book. The original books didn't have verses though, so sometimes you'll see slightly different numbers on other diagrams that scholars have. But it still gives a good idea how much overlap there is in each area. If we go back to our map of the four church fathers who wrote about the traditional development of the Gospels, we'll add one more, Jerome, in maybe 400 AD. He started to think differently about the development and said they were all independently written. That the similarities are either coincidence or just because there was a really strong oral tradition that they wrote out of. Some modern scholars think the same thing, but not many. The next person to add on the map is Augustine from Hippo. 
just after Jerome. He laid down the text of Matthew, Mark and Luke next to each other. And then from an early scientific perspective, he suggested that Matthew wrote first, Mark copied off him, and then Luke referenced Matthew and Mark. Most scholars for the next 1400 years followed Augustine's hypotheses. But why is there this literacy interdependency? And is the traditional order of writing true? Critical analysis over the last two centuries has questioned Augustine due to evidence from successive reliance, possible dependence on lost written sources, influence of oral sources and traditions, the language the book was originally written in, and any redaction or editing into the final form the books take. Grishbach and some other scholars argue that Luke depended on Matthew, with Mark abbreviating both. It's called the Grishbach hypothesis. Other scholars then made an assumption that the synoptic development should be understood as a reaction to various developing needs of the early church. Based on this, people began to consider Mark as the original. This was because Mark's version was more simple and the patterns of editing by the Gospels perhaps made better logical sense if Mark was first. Scholars started looking at the areas of overlap, where Matthew, Mark and Luke share large portions of text. They call this the triple tradition. It's mostly narrative text. And the order and sequence they all presented is similar. Although Mark's accounts are often longer, many scholars consider the details Matthew and Luke eliminate are implied in their retelling, therefore suggesting Mark was written first. Where did this triple tradition overlap come from? Well, some suggest that components of shared text originate from a separate earlier source, like oral tradition, well known and memorised by Jesus' followers. But then perhaps also maybe there was a written document, an earlier pre-gospel narrative of Jesus' death, his passion. Just hypothesis, but maybe. The next bit of overlap is mutual text that Matthew and Luke share, but that Mark doesn't include. So it's called a double tradition with Matthew and Luke. This is smaller, but it's still significant overlap. Interestingly, it contains sayings and signs of Jesus, less narrative. Some similarities are major, but others are minor. The most bizarre thing about this overlap is that Matthew and Luke have a different order for this text. There's a rearrangement somewhere. Why? Well, a German scholar, Weiss, thought that Matthew and Luke obtained this mutual information from an earlier pre-gospel source. So Matthew and Luke didn't copy each other, they just shared an earlier source. He called this the two-source hypothesis. Source in German is Keller, so people call this Q. Some scholars also think that Q was made up of two separate documents, one of sayings and the other signs. Just hypothesis, but maybe. Looking at the content of Q, these signs and sayings, most people think that there was an oral tradition component, well known and memorised by Jesus' followers. But as well as that, the early church father, Papias, mentions a source of oracles called Logia. He's not very detailed about it, but perhaps this is included here. Then also there's a scattered range of references that the Apostle Paul makes in his letters that have occasional overlap. So did Matthew or Luke reference Paul's letters? Another clue is the Epistle of James. His book overlaps a lot with Jesus' Sermon on the Mount. About 50% of his text refers to this shared content in Q. Perhaps Luke and Matthew sourced James. Perhaps some of Q originates from James. Just hypothesis, but maybe. Now each gospel does have some unique text. For Matthew, there was his own take, then probably an oral tradition component. But there's also some similarity with an early document called the Didache, perhaps some of its shared text. With Luke, he tells us that he already used lots of sources, so he has his own experience, plus an oral tradition component, but perhaps also an infancy narrative too. His text about Jesus' birth appears to be a different type of writing to the rest of his book. So, including unique text from Matthew and Luke, 
Streeter expanded the two source theory of Mark and Q to a four document hypothesis. Mark, Q, Matthew's source and Luke's source. After a while, scholars started to question the theory of Q a bit more. They suggested that an overlap text in Matthew and Luke is not a Q source, mainly because there are many passages where Matthew and Luke agree in making small changes to the text in Mark. Another scholar, Wilkie, claimed Matthew used Luke. He said, if this happens, you don't need a hypothetical source of Q. However, Farah, another scholar, claimed Luke used Matthew, following evidence of ancient tradition. It's called the farah Goulder Hypothesis. Since then, other scholars have suggested minor variations to Streeter's and Farah's hypotheses. Perhaps Luke was dependent on Matthew. This would make a three-source theory, Mark, Q and Matthew as the original key sources. So how did the overlap develop? Well, the consensus between scholars seems to be shifting, who knows? So let's go back to what Synoptic suggests, who imply to be seen together. It's a bit unusual, but just think about 3D images. Stereopsis is the fusion of dissimilar images, enabling depth perception. Now if you can, maybe pause the video and stare through this magic eye picture. Hidden inside, is this. Some modern scholars, like Bart Ehrman, overlook the ability for Jewish first century Christians to accurately deal with oral tradition. But like Plato did for Socrates, it's pretty straightforward for first century Christians to consider writing accurately about Jesus' life. And they chose to use the methods of text overlap. They saw it in their Old Testament Bible. It gives a multi-dimensional view now of Jesus. Within this perspective, we start to get why there are synoptic gospels. Plagiarism partly happened because they didn't care who got the credit. What mattered for them was just getting the truth out there.